terrible damn light, isn't it? Yes, never mind. Oh, yeah. Mr. Whitney. Oh, yes? Remembering back to the time that you, you joined up, can you remember those days? My word, clearly? I can, especially today. Today is the 3rd of March, and I have a privilege to belong to a squadron of Lancers that's left Sydney to go to England for six months training at Aldershot, and we're attached as the 4th squadron of a, a mighty regiment, an imperial regiment, uh, the 6th Dragoon Guard. And we, we were trained just as a, an Imperial Cavalryman was. And we did everything, I think I told you a little while ago, we did everything by the main guard. What uh, made you want to join up? Well, when I was going to school, I was born at Prospect, not far away from here. And I used to watch three Lancers going down the Western Road on parade of a Saturday, not far from our home. I thought to myself, when I grow up big enough, I could always ride. I said, when I grow up big enough, I'll, I'll save up and buy a good horse and I'll join the Lancer Regiment. But I joined the Lancer Cadets, which were, in those days, the only Lancer Cadets in the world, in the British Empire, didn't they? And I joined those and from there, as I grew and I had a good horse, good horse, excuse me, a good horseman. And the time came on this near the third of March. We were camped. There was a camp, camp at Parramatta Barracks under canvas. And uh, they asked me would I like to be, would I like to go to England with the Lancer Regiment? As I was a big boy, big lump, 17. So I said yes, but I'd have to ask mum my mum was a widow, and when I got home, I said to mum, I've got a chance to go to England, mum, but I had to find 25 quid. Oh, she said that. Well, we'll find it somehow, but anyhow, it was found, and I was, I was selected to go to England with the other squadron, and some of them, some of that squadron came from as far north as Lismore, Singleton Maitland, uh, Berry and Robertson, and Sydney and Parramatta. And Parramatta had the, the biggest number of men. And we sailed away and... Did you know much about the Boers before you left? No, nothing. When we were in England, we were uh, getting near the end of our six months training. The captain said, uh, war was mooted. War clouds gathered over, and Cox was a bit of a fighting man, which he proved to be afterwards. He called us all together and he said, well, if, if war does break out, would you fellas like to volunteer for service? And he got a unanimous vote. And he sent word to the War Office in London that we like to take part in it. We are accepted. But he had to get permission from the New South Wales government. At that time, the New South Wales, each state, I think it was, had their own defence force. Well, we got permission. We, on the 10th of November, we had to leave for home, and we were on board ship, and a dense fog came, and we couldn't, the ship couldn't get out. We delayed a day until the 11th, and next morning we were awakened by the cries of the newsboys selling papers that war and Africa were at war. Ah, England and, and Africa were at war. And the ship was on a bright sunny morning and the, the ship was able to get out. And we sailed not knowing whether we could land or not. But when we got to Africa on the 2nd of November, uh, a cable was there for Cox to say, we could go to go. We could go and land in Africa. Do you remember much about the the campaign? What were your feelings when you first uh, saw action? Well, I thought I thought that this was the end of me, and I thought that I was not going to see any of my covers again. Because when I was a kid going to school, mind you, I'm only 17. I'm going to school with history, where they formed squares, the British formed squares, and fought to the 
so I finished. And I thought to myself, that's the dead, dead end of that. Well, we got in winter into action. Before the end of November, we were in action. And uh, our squadron was broken up into two. The Scottish Brigade under General Mathewan, I think it was, the guards, it was, up at Belmont, Grassbound, Magus Fontaine and those places to do reconnaissance for the infantry brigade because they had no mounted men. The other half went down to Norport and we were sent out towards Rendsburg on the same kind of job and we copped it about the same time as the chaps up at Belmont did. What were the Boers like as fighters? Oh, good hit and run. They, they'd, they'd be on a copy and they're in good positions. When we come along, that's how they copped us the first time. They gave us a bit of pepper and then fared out. When, we, when we'd come to the, to the copies where they were, there's nobody there, only there what was left. If they got it, if we were able to uh, return the fire, there might have been a few killed, a few casualties. But we, in the first action, we only lost one man. And no, we didn't lose a man, it was a horse. A horse was shot dead. And one of the other chaps, on the, on the right of the line, closest to the board, uh, saw Harrison in, uh, on the ground, and he stopped and picked him up and rode off with him. And he was recommended uh, for the VC, but uh, Morris never got it. And then from there we went back to Norport and then from there we were sent up to Belmont to the other troop. From there we went across to Partyburg and that's where we oh. got party and probably uh, entered Bloemfontein. And then on with a spell at Brown Bloemfontein. Oh, Bloemfontein was a bit of a snag. Oh, I happened to be a wire cutter on the day that, that, that we were approaching Bloemfontein. And several of us were just about to cut wires and wire fences that the troops there as the boys opened fire on on us. Uh, but anyhow, we got out of it. There wasn't many casualties that day. Do you remember Churchill being there at all, Winston Churchill? I, met, I didn't. I don't say I met him, but I, I saw him there with on Lord Roberts's column with Lord Kitchener. Did you admire him? Uh, well. He had a great name, and the, as far as we knew, he was a great soldier. And I think he was, too. When you came back from the Boer War, what sort of reaction did you get from the people back here in the Australia of New South Wales? Wonderful. That's part of it. That was. We got a wonderful reception. I, I, came, I was in Valley to home. I got enteric fever at Kimberley, after the relief of Kimberley. And uh, I got home, and everybody's... Well, they looked after me wonderfully well in uh, Bloemfontein. I was sent back from Kimberley on a, a very slow transport. There were no, no cars in those days. And a very slow transport and the summer, summer sun, sunshine that had killed me on this back of this wagon. But I was put into a hospital there and they cured me. I had enteric pneumonia and this was did the people back here in Australia really know much about the, the Boer War? Did, did they really care? I don't think they knew much about it, but they they did a wonderful they won, did a wonderful job in uh, subscribing to the benefits to help those that were in want that belonged to the, the soldiers that did go. For instance, there was a uh, a fund they raised in raised in. Uh, Sydney or around the districts, New South Wales would say, to the rate of about 80,000 pounds. That was a lot of money then. And they repatriated those uh, that needed it to come back, such as widows and children of those that were left in want. They did a wonderful job up to about 50,000 odd pounds. The rest of it wasn't used much after that, there wasn't much use for it after the war was over and nearly forgotten. 
about 1914, I'd say, that the government of New South Wales thought that they would take over the, take that money over and put it into a trust fund in which they, they help our association today. Do you have any thoughts about conscription at all? You would have had to... Oh, I know it was. A lot of I made, I made some, well, not many enemies, but some didn't, some disliked my methods of thought. But I really think that it was a good thing myself. And I would, I would appreciate it again now, because we, we our defence forces dropped down to almost zero. I know my own regiment. I served in my regiment. I told you, didn't I? Yep. For 37 years. But uh, I know that by then. Uh,